Madison's face turned pale. She stayed where she was, unable to say a word. She didn't understand. They had told her to get married, and she had done just that. She didn't understand why her father would say such things to her. Everyone would probably ridicule her if word of this got out. She couldn't tolerate being treated like this by her father. Do you really see me as such a bad person? She asked him directly, looking him straight in the eyes. None of them had noticed that Kelsey hadn't come back since she had gone to open the door. You all wanted me to get married, she continued. So I got married. And only two hours later, you're forcing me to get a divorce? Are power and wealth more important to you than the happiness of your children? How can you be so self-absorbed? Even brother was forced to leave his home for you. It seemed that she wasn't afraid of being slapped a second time. She knew that her words would infuriate him, but had said them anyway. When John raised his hand to strike her, she closed her eyes and prepared herself for the pain. However, the blow never came, and Madison slowly opened her eyes again to see Ian standing in front of her with his hand wrapped around John's wrist. His simple yet firm action suddenly made Madison want to cry. She was neither overly emotional nor very fragile, yet the man before her instinctively made her want to rely on him for protection. Hello, sir, he said. I am Ian, Madison's husband. He pulled Madison toward him with his other hand, and only then did he let go of John's wrist. He nodded at him in apology for the rudeness of his behavior. While his attitude appeared humble, he possessed an aura that made others feel inferior. Stella stared at Ian, stunned. She walked over to him and asked in disbelief, What did you say? You're Madison's husband? Kelsey's face had turned pale. Just one look at Ian was enough for everyone to know that he was superior to Luke. How can she be so lucky? Kelsey thought. She was just dumped by Luke, and she had already found this guy. Her fingers curled into fists, and her nails dug into her skin. The look she gave Madison was pure jealousy. Ian casually swept his eyes over the people in the room. He took Madison's hand in his, the heat passing through her like a warm current. It flowed through her entire body, concentrating on her heart. I'm sorry I'm late, but there was an emergency at the hospital, and I had to rush back, he said. He seemed very calm, although he was unhappy with what was happening. He knew how to hide his emotions well. I came here to discuss our marriage with the family. John was still seething, but Ian's sudden appearance had shocked him enough to distract him a little. Sternly, he asked, When did you get married? And why didn't you tell us about it? Don't you know that Madison is already engaged to Drake? Madison looked at her father in disbelief. He really would do anything just to get ahead in life. He was slandering her in front of her new husband. Would he really sacrifice his children for his family's wealth? She thought. Ian's gaze turned to Drake and he spoke. I'm sorry. But as far as I know, Madison and Drake haven't tied the knot yet. As long as she isn't already married, she has the right to choose her husband. He stood close to her, his body in words shielding her from her family's cruelty. This is what a man should be like, she thought. Ian was no fool. He had heard the argument when he had come inside. Upon entering the living room, he had seen John raising his hand to Madison and had stopped him. Now that he was facing the people in the room, he was quite angry. They obviously all thought very highly of themselves and had a natural sense of superiority. He didn't like people who thought they were better than others. I'm surprised you're brave enough to marry Madison, Stella said. With what all the rumors going around, aren't you afraid that she'll cheat on you? I'm sure everyone has heard about the events of these past few days. We didn't think she would find anyone to marry her, she mocked. Ian didn't even turn to look at Stella as she spoke. I believe her. I believe that she's a good person. I'll never regret marrying her, he stated nonchalantly. His voice was low, yet his words were convincing. 
Madison felt like she might cry at what he had just said. She trembled slightly. Even her father didn't believe her. But this man, whom she had only met twice, believed her without hesitation. No matter what his motives were, Madison's heart was warmed by his words. Ian turned to Madison and lowered his head slightly. The look he gave her was especially intimate in the eyes of outsiders. In a pleasant voice, he told her, I brought some things. They're in my car. Could you get someone to bring them in? She blinked twice, then asked one of the help to fetch them. When they returned, everyone was shocked. Although Ian hadn't brought many things, they were all luxurious. There were two bottles of top-tier wine from 1945 from a winery in Bordeaux. Then two boxes of fine cigars and several expensive tonics. All the gifts screamed high status, and both John and Stella stared at them with wide eyes. Drake looked over and rubbed his nose. There weren't many people who could casually afford such things. Just the price of the two bottles was ridiculously high. Ian wasn't paying attention to their reactions, however. He just stood there, holding Madison's hand. I'm sorry I married your daughter so hastily, sir, he said. I know I am only visiting for the first time today, but please believe me when I say that I will treat her well and protect her from harm to the best of my ability. Please entrust me with her, Ian assured. His voice was sincere and sounded natural. Madison felt smitten. It was the most romantic thing she had heard in years. His words brought John back out of his shock. He opened his mouth to speak, but couldn't think what to say. All he could do was straighten up and nod in agreement. Stella and Kelsey looked at Ian. Then, Stella gestured to Kelsey, who understood and went up to stand beside the man. Curiously, she asked, Hello, brother-in-law. I've never seen you before. Where do you work? How do you know my sister? When did you meet? Ian didn't answer. He followed John and took a seat on the couch. Madison sat down beside him. The couch was full and Kelsey had to sit on the armrest. I remember she had a boyfriend in college, Kelsey said. Was that you? Good. I'm glad she has someone, too. She regarded him with a pure, harmless look on her face. Hearing this, Ian raised his eyebrows and looked at Madison, who was sitting silently beside him.